Hi, I'm Will Gerling. I'm a sports and performance nutritionist working with some of the world's best athletes in cycling, rugby, heavyweight boxing, Ironman and other ultra endurance events. I also work with your everyday average Joe and Joanne, taking them from a grand fondo all the way up to age group worlds as well. I'm here to bring to you information and research that I'm either doing or reading to convey to you in an easy digestible way so you can implement that into your own training. Hello and welcome to today's video. So today we're going to be talking about carbohydrates in different forms, gel, bar, liquid and mixture and its effect on performance, oxidation rates, stomach and so on. Our first study is by someone called Neuregard et al. and this is 2014. Okay, I think I said that right, I'm not, I'm not completely sure. Let's go straight into the study and go from there. We have 12 male cyclists, okay, they are doing a 140 minute race simulation and they have four different trials. Each trial is, as I said, a bar completely, gel, liquid or a mixture of all three. Okay, they're having 80 grams an hour and what I really liked about this study was that they matched every day. So each trial had the same lead up of four days of both exercise and food diary wise. So they were starting the event with the same muscle glycogen stores or stored carbohydrate and the same levels of fatigue. And our results. As we can see, gel did the best and bar did the worst. Drink and mix did not do significantly worse than the gel. They were about the same really enough and bar still did the worst than all of them. And that's mainly because the bar had a slower digestion rate, it oxidized slower, it had a greater feeling of fullness and nausea, also had a higher RPE and that's gonna play its effect on its total watts. I think that the duration of this trial wasn't that long. It was only two hours and 20 minutes and most road races are gonna be three to four hours. And then if we move into like ultra endurance stuff, it's way longer. So I don't think you'd just do one food on its own. And if we reference like other studies by Costa and Hoffman et al, 2019, we can see that especially in ultra endurance sport, that palate fatigue is a huge factor. Now, Palate fatigue is to do with obviously taking the same foods and starting to get nausea and GI distress because you're having the same flavors, same things over and over. And as exercise duration increases, it's so much more important that we get a variety of foods, things, you know, they looked at even like salted pretzels or crackers and things like this. So if you're starting to go into longer duration stuff, it's way more important to go for a mix so you can actually stomach that food because it's pointless going oh, gel's the best, it oxidizes the best, but then if you can't do gels for 11 hours, then it's pointless. So getting a mix of that is gonna be the most ideal. There's a couple of other studies that looked at this. Uh, for instance, like Togged et al, in 1997, looked at liquid and gel and found it exactly the same. Um, they, so they performed the same. And also Pfeiffer, or Pfeiffer, or Pfeiffer et al, um, who 2010, 2010, and 2012 also looked at this and comparing liquid to gel and found that it was equivocal. It's a really good study actually, you know, it shows that around 35% of the carbohydrate sources we take on during an event come from gels. It showed that viscosity also affects uh, digestion rate. So the more viscous a gel is, the slower it is in digesting. So that might be why some gels like goo in particular or something like this that you might find you struggle to take on board. Now this does change with different people. Some people get that and some people don't. Um, and that isn't fully proven in research. I think it's quite equivocal. And so no, you know, not there's, a, there's enough studies saying for and against that. So it's something you know taking note of. What was really interesting also was that when we come back to duration, if we think about shorter duration stuff and in the cold, gels seem to be more beneficial because even though in this study by Pfeiffer that he compared liquid to gel and they had both the same amount of liquid and the same amount of carbohydrate per hour, that if it's colder, you don't need as much fluid. So if you made just a water bottle and you drank that ad libitum, so however you wanted, as frequently as you wanted, and then you had a gel on the side, then you could eat as much carbohydrate as you wanted and drink as much as you wanted in relation to temperature and effort. 
Whereas if it's in a drink, if you need or want that carbohydrate, you have to drink fluid, which means that you might start to fill out or bloat your stomach a little bit just because you're trying to get that carbohydrate in. And especially if it's not very hot, then, you know, you're going to end up needing to piss a lot, which isn't ideal. What do I really think and what do I think the real take home messages are? I think you need to think about the duration of your event. I think, is it one hour, two hour, four hour, five hour? Is it 11 hours, 12 hours? Is it multi-day? Is it multi-day of five or six hours? Is it multi-day of like 10 hours? These are big factors because the longer it goes, the more about palate fatigue and more about mixture of foods, I think is important. The shorter it's coming, especially in that middle ground or about four hours, like road races, you wanna go for performance. You wanna go for what's easy to take on what's going to make you feel best if you start thinking about things like practicality i got to carry it all on me if i'm doing an ultra marathon you know it's all going to be in my backpack so what's calorie dense what's going to still make me feel good what's going to help me perform how am i going to get in the amount per hour that i need all right and also as race duration goes on especially above two three hours of racing that is so racing so the intensity is higher you know you should be eating more towards definitely above 60 grams per hour and going more towards 70 80 90 grams per hour I think all this research needs more females, more females for sure, because of the different oxidation rates. There's a lot more stuff coming out in triathlon for females, which is interesting, and ultra endurance. This is definitely the area that I spend a lot more of my time researching. I've read hundreds of studies looking at this. So things that really affect digestion rates are actually fiber, fat, protein, and high intensity exercise. So obviously the higher your heart rate and effort goes, the more blood is going to the areas that are working and less around your stomach and your spleen. So you're not able to digest as much as quickly. Now, fiber, fat, and protein are all things that come in food. So that means that it's gonna slow down that digestion rate, especially with higher fat intakes. It's gonna go down into that duodenum. It's gonna slow down that digestion process. This is what I find so interesting about bars that are out on the market. You look at certain products with nuts, cliff bars, whatever it is, and it's got like 12, 13, 14, 15 grams of fat in, and you're going out on your ride, and maybe it is more of a performance-based ride, but you're smashing back all this fat, which is slowing down that dig digestion. You're not getting those carbohydrates as quickly as if you took it through a liquid or a semi-solid, as proven in this study. It's gonna make you feel like you're working harder, and I think going for low-fat bars is more important. You know, what are you trying to get out of that session, especially, if we look at recommended daily fat intakes for a healthy individual at 0 0.6 grams per kilogram per day. So that could be 50 grams. And if you go out on a ride for, you know, however many hours, let's say it's three hours and you knock back four bars, you know, that's 40 grams of fat in that. And you're like, well, my daily intake is going to be like 50, 60. So it's a lot. What do I do with the athletes I work with? I work with a lot of Ironman triathletes. I work with a lot of ultra endurance and Audax riders. And the main thing that I get all the people I work with to do in probably starting from 12 weeks away, but definitely uh, more intensely from six weeks away is practice race day nutrition. I can't emphasize it enough. Practice what you're going to do on the event. If you are going to race and you're going to go to an event and that event is sponsored by Power Bar or it's sponsored by SIS, start using their products. If you're going to pick up food from the feed zones or even if you're not, make sure you're practicing all the bits that you're going to have. Are you going to have two gels, a bottle and a bar an hour? Cool. Go out and do some events or rides or uh, training sessions, bricks, whatever it is with that amount of food. You need to practice and get your stomach used to riding at that or running at that intensity and then having that amount of food. If you don't practice that, you don't know where your limit is. And we know that within maximal absorption rates of carbohydrate, so glucose and fructose, we have people, the outliers that can absorb like 120 grams an hour, which is nuts. But then when there's people that max out at like 80 grams an hour because they just can't take on any more than that from a gastro intestinal discomfort point of view or just literally can't absorb that much there's a huge range you know it pretty much averages out at 90 but 
and that's what you know science says 90 grams per hour but there are people within that and you need to find that limit for yourself so making sure that you are practicing those rides or runs or brick sessions or whatever it is or having some practice races and events like a, a 70.3 uh, Ironman in a lead up to a full Ironman will be great practice for you to be able to do what you need and suss out any bits you need to iron out it would be interesting to see what things you're struggling with, what things that you do in your races that maybe you're finding your stomach's not going well. So maybe pop down in the comments below what you take on in a race and what kind of race it is and the duration. And I'll get back to you on there. And I'd also love to hear what else you'd love to see more of. Would you like to hear more about fasting or um, should you fast? Um, how much should you take on per hour, um, etc. All right, and drop me a like as well if you really enjoyed the video. I hope you liked it and I'll speak to you soon. Thanks, bye.